we had expressed it as a combination of the coefficients c2 psi2 plus and so on and so forth what are these these are the eigen functions and then when we ask what is the probability of observing a particular eigen value then we turn our attention to this and what are these these are essentially the the projection of the given psi function on the appropriate eigen function right so in this case also you have to do the same thing you have been given the operator which will have its own eigen vectors and the probability of observing a particular eigen value is to be obtained like this that means the given function its bracket with the appropriate eigen function related with that particular eigen value clear so that is how the probabilities are to be obtained in this case can we go on with today's class if there is any question you can ask so yeah um is that can you uh, can hear you in the question it is written what are the probabilities uh, what is the probabilities uh, uh what are the prob each value if what each eigen value mean by each value each eigen value okay first is that okay. what are the values what are the values of the observable can be observed then you answer that okay the only values that been observed are the eigen values therefore in this case each value are essentially related to these right these values and we have concluded that these values are nothing but the eigen values clear yeah. you cannot observe any value of an observable yes, you can only observe the eigen values of an observable and therefore these values are eigen values value it can be nothing but the eigen values clear yeah. okay shall we shall yes, we go sir. on thank you shall we go on thank you let me kill this now yeah uh so we were here uh you have learned essentially regarding two types of operators the hermitian operators and the unitary operators and you have learned that the hermitian operators have the property that their eigen values are real uh you have uh learned about unitary operators also we'll talk about their eigen values today so essentially the point is that uh given a setup given a setup means you have been given a psi function you have been given an operator that that reflects some kind of a observable quantity and you are trying to solve a problem it is often more convenient to express the problem in a convenient form by change of basis so uh the basis would be some kind of orthonormal set of uh, functions so we need to figure out what can the orthonormal functions be for a hermitian operator as well as for a unitary operator uh hermitian operators are you know when you want to make a connection with physical things any operator that is representing an observable quantity something that you can measure must be a hermitian operator and unitary operators uh since we have seen that unitary operators retain the norm of the function they operate on and you have also learned that when a system evolves according to the schrodinger equation the psi function its norm does not change we have also learned that so it is easy to relate the two and conclude that then when a system evolves according to the schrodinger equation 
then the evolution must be unitary. All that happens that the, the norm of the vector, the size of the vector, the length remains the same. The uh, normalization is preserved. All that can happen is that in your mind's eye, you can imagine that the vector rotates, keeping its norm fixed. And that can happen only when you operate on it by a unitary operator. So by the Schrodinger equation, the evolution is always unitary. That's why we are paying so much attention to you know, the Hermitian operators and the unitary operators. Today, we'll learn about their eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. We have already learned that eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator must be real. But what about the eigenfunctions? Uh, in order to, to probe that question, let's start here. Uh, take, for example, a, a, a Hermitian operator omega. And its eigenfunction be omega. OK? So the operator operate on its eigenfunction must be the eigenvalue times the eigenfunction. OK? And let us call it the eigenvalue to be omega. Now, there would be many of them. So we'll put a subscript i, i. Uh, similarly, let us consider another eigenfunction, omega operating on omega j, another eigenfunction, and that is equal to, uh, it will be omega j operating on omega j. So this is the eigenvalue related to the eigenfunction omega j. This omega operator operating on the eigenfunction gives the eigenvalue times eigenfunction. Simple thing. Now we uh, uh, we dotting. Let's call this one, and let's call this two. With the bra omega j and 2 with the bra, sorry, I have, it should be the bra, uh, omega i, then uh, you have dotted it here, so it will become omega j capital omega operator omega i is equal to uh, this is just a number it will come to the front i omega j omega i the first one gives this okay let's call it equation 3 the second one uh, gives omega i omega omega j so i have put omega i in the front same thing it will be omega j it will be omega i omega j omega i omega j now uh, I want to exchange this position so that the left hand side becomes the same. Basically, this is the ijth element of the operator omega. I want to express this also in the same way so that we want to express that, exchange their positions. And that can be done. Uh, that means this is a Hermitian matrix. If you exchange the position, you are talking about the jith uh, location of that matrix. And we already know that the Hermitian matrices are. Uh, the, these, uh, these are conjugate of each other. So if I want to write it as omega j, omega, omega i, then I have to uh, star the right hand side. Star means I have to take a conjugate. So omega j was a eigenvalue. We can take the conjugate of that. And the conjugate of this is nothing but this placed in the ultra fashion. So it is omega j 
omega i. All right. So now, now this and that in the left hand side are the same. All you need to do now is to uh, subtract this from that. So the, the left hand sides cancel off. This will immediately give 0 is equal to omega i here minus omega j star. Uh, this one is uh, the same, omega j, omega i. Okay. So this means, I'll get some space here. This means that if i equal to j, then it immediately implies that uh, these two are the same. So it is omega i is equal to omega i star. So this essentially talks about that eigenvalues are real, which you already know. But the other one uh, comes when if i not equal to j, that implies that the other one should be, should be 0, which means that omega j omega i that should be equal to 0 which means that the eigen vectors are orthogonal good if the eigen vectors are orthogonal remember in for any matrix that would not happen for any matrix the eigen vectors need not be orthogonal to each other but for hermitian operators that should be true and if the eigenvectors are orthogonal to each other, we can easily obtain orthonormal vectors out of them. And you can use that as basis. And if you use that as basis, then the operators become a diagonal matrix with the diagonal positions occupied by the eigenvalues. And that's a very simple thing to, to deal with. So this is a, a trick that we'll often use. So we just proved that this will be, uh, so this is one way of, uh, obtaining a very convenient basis. You might ask that this would be true if the eigenvalues are all uh, distinct. What if there are repeated eigenvalues? So what if there are repeated eigenvalues? Now, what I've just proved is in your mind's eye, you might say that uh, I have a system of coordinates. I have a system of coordinates like this. And I have uh, one eigen vector like this. So I will one eigen vector like this. And now if uh, you have all distinct ones, then there would be other eigen vectors which are orthogonal to these and orthogonal to each other. That's what we have just proved. But if there are repeated eigen values, then the other ones should be like a plane, should be like a plane. And the plane itself is orthogonal to the other uh, eigenvector. So you might choose any eigenvector along uh, this direction. You might choose any eigenvector along this direction. All the vectors in this plane are the eigenvectors of this, this matrix. And you might choose another eigenvector in the, in the same plane. These three will be orthogonal to each other. You might need to make these orthogonal. And that can be easily done by choosing just any vector in this plane. And then using the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization technique to make orthogonal vectors out of them. Clear? So the moment you have obtained such orthogonal vectors, uh, I would say orthonormal vectors, because each one has to be of unit norm. Uh, mm -hmm. If you obtain orthonormal vectors, then you can use that as a very convenient basis. OK, good. So yeah. now we consider uh, unitary matrices. Huh?
and try to figure out what its eigenvalues and eigenfunctions should be. Uh, by the way, uh, the way I said, you will have to deal with repeated eigenvalue situation. That means something that has degeneracy. Uh, I have only explained how you handle it, and I'll give you a tutorial problem in which you actually have to do it, and then things will be clearer. If you solve the problems by hand, only then things become clearer. If you simply read, that doesn't always help. So be careful about solving all the problems, and I'll make sure that everything is clearer because I choose the problems to be given in uh, tutorials so that a particular concept becomes clear only if you solve that problem. You, know, uh, you, you, you consider, okay, so we have decided that the Hermitian operators, we have this. We have decided that Hermitian operators are, uh, are such operators whose eigenvalues are real and the eigenfunctions are orthogonal to each other. Now let's see what are the characters of the unitary operators in the same, same way. Again, we proceed the same way. We take a unitary operator operating on its own eigenvector ui. So you get an eigenvalue ui multiplied by the, the eigen function ui okay and similarly we take another eigen vector uj is equal to uj okay exactly the same thing that we did earlier we are doing the same thing uh, we first take the adjoint of this to adjoint adjoint of this will be it will be u j bra and u dagger operating on it okay is equal to this is the number so you can simply write it u j Okay, so we have converted the ket equation to a bra equation. That's all. And now, uh, now let us dot it with ui. So dot it with ui. So it gives uj. Uh, okay, let us let, let us dot it not exactly with UI. Let us dot it with this equation. With this equation, okay. So uh, let us call it one. Let us call this as two. What we are trying to do is to dot two with one. So uh, the bra side is u j uh, u dagger u dagger and this one side this side is u and u i right is equal to here in this side is u j this side is uh, I will, I will, these are numbers, so I'll just take this out. Eh? Okay. So I'll first work with this one. Ui. Then it is basically Ui, sorry, I. I is here. Ui, and here it is Uj star. Okay, and now you can see that u uh, dagger u because it's a unitary operator. The definition is that this is unit uh, identity matrix, so this, there should be nothing here. So we get uh, this one is u j u i. This one is also u j u i. So we can take it to the uh, left hand side, and we can write one minus this one u i u j star times u j 
u i should be equal to zero. Again, we consider two possibilities. Again, we consider two possibilities. If i equal to j, then if i equal to j, then uh, this term should be one, and therefore this term has to be zero. So u i u j star should be uh, equal to one. What does that mean? This means these are the eigenvalues. This means uh, okay, i is equal to j, so I'll write i in both places. I in both places. So ui, ui star is equal to 1. It essentially means that the, the uh, so this essentially means the eigenvalues are complex numbers of unity modulus huh? and if i not equal to j then we conclude that uh, ui uj should be equal to zero which means the eigenvectors are orthogonal okay so uh, these are the character properties of the uh, unitary matrix and the Hermitian matrix, right? And this actually gives us a way of uh, doing a some some uh, transformation of the basis vector so that we can formulate a problem in a more convenient way. Before we go ahead, if there is any question, I'll just uh, pause a bit. So we see that uh, for both Hermitian operators and unitary operators, the eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal. So does yes. this mean that uh, there is always a connection between a unitary and a Hermitian operator? I mean, uh, one unitary operator is always a function of another Hermitian operator. No, 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 not exactly like that. Not exactly like that. It's just, just that they are two different classes of operators and they have one property common to it, common with them. One is that uh, their uh, eigenvectors are orthogonal. That's all. Okay, mm -hmm. sir. I was hinting at the fact that uh, often it will be convenient for us to change basis so that we can we can cast the problem in a way that is more convenient to solve. So we need to uh, tackle the problem of change of basis. Essentially, uh, let me clear this up. Okay. So we are now talking about the change of this. Huh? So, uh, in order to, to have something as basis, you have to have something, a basis was a basis, something is now becoming a basis. You have to have both sets as uh, sets of orthonormal coordinates, okay? Some uh, orthonormality conditions have to be satisfied and also completeness condition. That means the vector should be expressible in terms of that basis, okay? Uh, you now assume that you have identified such and uh, so we had a set of basis A and we are now converting to a set of basis B. 
So we had a set of basis A is being converted to a set of basis. Now uh, we assert that there exists an unitary operator uh, U such that uh, the B's B1 is the operator operating on A1. B2 is that operator operating on A2, and so on and so forth. Bn is that operator operating on uh, An, and so on. So, uh, so in order to prove this, this was something that we asserted. Uh, in order to prove the what I'll do is that we will first. Uh, I'll first say that what operator, what U operator does this job? And then we'll prove that that actually it happens. Okay. So we assert that U, this operator, the one that will actually do the job is summed over K, BK. Okay, that we, we assert and then we go on to prove it. Uh, so, so, apply this matrix. On uh, a L. So if we had apply, then you have U operating on AL is equal to, it will be summed over K, BK, AK, AL, okay? Now, AKAL is uh, is the delta, and therefore all terms vanish except when k is equal to L. So this will simply become BL, which we actually wanted, right? So this operator actually is doing the job. You operate it on AL, you get BL, hmm? and. Uh, Uh, okay, for this particular matrix, what is is its adjoint? This is what we uh, let's ask. What is this? Now, if you want to obtain Sir, this, yeah, yeah. So, did we start with the ortho orthonormal basis in the first place? Yes, whenever it is a basis, it has to have to be orthonormal. So A was orthonormal, B is also orthonormal, but it could be different. Something like this. Uh, you had a set of orthonormal basis like this, and now you choose another set of orthonormal basis. Oh, it's not changing the color. Another set of orthonormal basis like this. So this could be the basis. So this could be, sorry. This could be a, sorry. Writing is becoming because it is not writing with the center. Uh, this is our A1. This is our A2. And this is our B1, this is our 
v2. So this is the setting, right? And I have a vector, any vector like this, which is now expressible either in terms of a or in terms of b. So we have to figure out how the the uh, the vector is then some some say uh, particular vector, uh, say. So this will be, it will have to be written as, so we are trying to figure out how these transform as the basis transforms, okay? And we'll also have to figure out how operators transform if we change the basis. Hmm. These are the things that we are uh, trying to figure out when we change the basis. So what is U dagger? U dagger is, U dagger will have to be operating on a L so it will be a l sorry a l bra the a l uh, and u dagger operating on that this is the bra u dagger operating on that should give the bra of b this is what we want and uh, then uh, we can we can substitute uh, in place of the u. Uh, then we see that sum over k. It is a l was here, and we uh, substitute. We are trying to figure out what should this be. We find that this has to be a k, and then here is to be b k. Then this is this one will become delta I, I lk and therefore the whole thing will become the uh, sorry, bl bl bra right so this is the operator uh, u dagger so u the adjoint of u is k it is uh, a l sorry I'm, I'm writing the wrong one it is operating on l i have to write only this part it is a k b k this is the corresponding uh, adjoint of that operator. So now let us check whether it becomes unitary or not. So u dagger u u dagger first k and then when you write the, the u part also there will be another so I will write the summations right up front. This is a l Sorry. B L and B K A K. This is nothing but the the delta, and therefore it comes to k a l a k and this is again equal to 1 right so uh, we find that the u matrix that does the job is unitary so the matrix that changes a, a, a vector, basis vector a basis set from another one basis set to another basis set then that operator is an unitary operator and its character is like this and its adjoint is like this. This is what we have computed. So that way we can change one basis to another basis. Okay. Uh, now, I want to figure out how vectors transform okay so 
I have a k u uh, let us try try to figure out what will be the the components the the matrix elements of the u matrix so that will be k lth element will be this so this is equal to uh, this operating l will become b l so a k b l that is actually the u t the the u matrices k lth element okay so we now know how to obtain the matrix exactly because the k lth element will be nothing but the the matrix element of u let me write it then it will be uh, it'll go into your head the matrix elements of uh, u are built from the inner product of the old this uh, this is old is this one bra and the new base kits Okay, so this is something that we need to remember because whenever we need to change the coordinates, we need to define the U matrix and it is easy to figure out what the elements of the U matrix will be. Okay. Now let's consider an arbitrary cat. Okay. Consider an arbitrary uh, alpha. Okay. So now we can write this as uh, k a k. This is something that we have seen. Each of these will project it along the base direction, and uh, so is each will be a projection, and then you sum over k, you get the the simple one. This is what we have already done, so we know how to do it. Hmm. And the, this one is the expansion coefficient in each a detection. Okay. The question is, how do we get get this in the in the new coordinate? So B L. This is what we are asking. How do we get the components? Of alpha vector in the new uh, basis. Okay, so we just write B L alpha is equal to sum over K. I'll express in this form. It will be B L and then this one A K and then it is. A K alpha, right? So I just put this one here. Now this, I can write it here. This is equal to sum over K. Uh, B L we have already learned. B L is here, so we can substitute it here. So B L is, uh, if you substitute it here, it is B L is obtained by op operating on the by the B L bra is obtained by operating by on A L bra by the U dagger. So it is A L bra operated by the U dagger operator, and this here A K. And then this remains as it is, a k alpha. Okay. 
okay so this is this is nothing but that's why we have written it that way okay uh, so this implies this implies that uh, effectively what you get is the new is equal to you dagger into the old this is the old components here is the new components and this is the u dagger matrix elements so effectively you are saying that the new vector obtained by multiplying the u dagger with the old vector okay so the 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 rule for transforming a vector in the old base to a vector in the new basis is simply to get the old vector i mean the column vector times the square matrix which is the u dagger and the new uh, that gives the new vector in the new coordinate system okay. we also need to before we finish we also need to obtain the relationship between the the uh, if you have an operator in the old coordinate system how does the operator express itself in the new coordinate system that's what we have to obtain so what we do is we write b k and some operator say x operator uh, b l this is the this is the matrix element in the new coordinate okay this is what we are trying to find out uh, then we we expand it expand it by putting i in both sides so it will be sum over two things uh, if i put i in both sides i'll have to sum over m and n it is bk then i have put an i i is basically uh, a m a m and summed over i that completes the i part and i have to now put the x and again i have to I have put an i here so let me write so that you remember i have put an i here and i have put an i here so next i is uh, a n a n we have summed over n so it's, it does the job and here we have b l okay sorry uh, finish it yeah b l okay so this is equal to sum over m sum over n uh, this is actually a uh, a k operated on by the unitary matrices uh, adjoint right this part this is and then i have a m then i have this a m x a n and then i have to write this also in terms of the old system it is a n it is unitary operator q operating on a l okay now this essentially means that the the uh, operator in the new basis so the operator in the new basis is say this 
it's dashed is nothing but the u dagger so u dagger x and this is u so this is nothing but the rule of the matrix multiplication that we have uh, just followed so it is the the new basis new new operator is obtained it operator in the new basis is obtained as the u dagger x u just multiplication of these matrices simple okay we have two minutes left so we have to finish now uh, so you have understood that if you convert an old basis into new basis two conditions have to be satisfied a the both the basis sets have to be orthonormal and b both have to be complete in the sense that any vector in the old basis as well as the new basis can be completely expressed now when you have identified such basis sets then you can easily convert one into the other by defining that uh, unitary operator u and then because it is converting a unity vector to another unity vector it has to be unitary operator it doesn't change the norm and then uh, based on that given any vector if it is expressed in the old basis basis how can we express in the new basis that was given by by this and if there is any operator if it is expressed in the old basis how do we express in the new basis that's given by this these are the two important results that we have obtained and we'll use them in the tutorial problem that we solve. Okay, we'll stop here. If there's a question, quickly ask, then we'll uh, maybe take up in the next class.